on time. Just very briefly, here's how we will do the rest of the evening. We will induct the class of 2020 first alphabetically, and then we will do the class of 2021 alphabetically. Here's how it goes. I will I will read the person's name who's going to be inducted. I'll then do an introduction, and while the introduction is is being, while I'm giving the introduction, the slideshow that the inductee gave to Paula will run on the two screens, one back there and one behind me. So, am I sure? Bill Gilbert always has to do that. Hey, everybody else, everybody knows. Oh, it was, was it Myron? Oh, it was Myron. Anyway, inductee, we ask that you stay at your table, watch your show. When the show is finished, your picture will stay up, and I will call you up to the podium. And if you, those of you that are here, you, a committee member will meet you, put a medallion around your neck, and then you may have no more than five minutes. And, and inducting 16 people, we, we really need to, to hold you to the five. So if, if you go over the five, uh, I may have to tap you, or Nancy Gilbert may have to tap you on your shoulder. Okay, here we go. We're looking for teachers, Liz. Uh, you want a job? <laughs> Next inductee, Charles Bidwell. Charles Bidwell graduated from Orville High School in 1938. Played football all four years. Following graduation, Charles served in the United States Army, Air, Army Air Corps during World War II, attending Signal Corps Radio School and was a radio operator in the Philippines. He also served in the Pacific Area Installation, doing operation and maintenance on AM-FM radio equipment and diesel electric plants, and was honorably discharged as a sergeant in 1945. Upon returning to Oroville after World War II, Charles went to work for Western Pacific Railroad for 20 years, where he was a troubleshooter inspecting and maintaining diesel electric locomotives and other railroad equipment. He then went to work for Oro Dam Constructors on the construction of the Oroville Dam, operating and servicing and supervising and maintenance of diesel locomotives and railroad equipment. In 1967, Charles went to work on the largest hydroelectric power plant in New Zealand. He then served two years as a general maintenance for Morrison Knudsen in Boise, Idaho, supervising 250 men. Later, he returned to Peru, serving as a master mechanic in the railroad shop, supervising 450 men for a floor company. His work career ended in 1982 when he retired from Pacific Coast Producers Norville. Charles had an extensive record of public service in his beloved Palermo. He was chairman of the Palermo Community Swimming Pool Fund, raising and building a community that helped build and design and build the Palermo Swimming Pool. He was a member of the Palermo Improvement Club, the Boy Scout leader for five years, even though he fathered four daughters and no sons. He also served as a trustee of the Palermo School District for 15 years, three of those as president and was a founding member of the Palermo Fire Department, Volunteer Fire Department. As a member of the Palermo Improvement Club, he spent countless numbers of hours working on community dinners, dances, Easter egg hunts, and building the shower and locker rooms and bathrooms at the new swimming pool. Charles was a member of the Masonic Order of the United States uh, and, New and New Zealand, Knights Templar, Royal and Select, and Shriner Ben Ali Temple. In 1965, he was recognized by the, Roy by the California Congress of PTA with honorary lifetime membership. Charles passed away in 1989 at age 69. He is survived by a daughter, Noni, also a 2020 Hall of Fame inductee, a daughter, Charlene Parker, 10 grandchildren, and six great-grandsons. Please welcome Kyle Buis, who will accept induction for his grandfather into the Hall of Fame Class of 2020.
Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for coming out here tonight and to thank those of you who will be watching this later on the recording. It's wonderful to have an opportunity to enshrine twice as many people tonight and to hear about all the good work so many people have done here over the years. Tonight I have the honor of presenting my grandpa, Charles Horace Bidwell, for his induction. He's not with us physically tonight. He passed away in 1989, but he's with us in spirit. I'm the youngest in my family, and despite a few gray hairs here and there, you can probably guess I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him. He was gone before I turned four, but when you're the youngest, you get to hear all the stories and pass them on. Like the one when I found out my grandpa and I had something in common. He worked for years as an electrician with the railroads. He worked on the Orville Dam in Peru and New Zealand, even, and even wired the house where I grew up in. He was very good at being an electrician. I've installed a ceiling fan, that's not the thing that we have in common. One day he went to the doctor's office and they did an eye test. It's that one where there's a hidden pattern and a bunch of different, uh, you know, it's like it's a hidden pattern of the dots. If you see it, it's a colorblind test. If you can see it, great. If you can't, well, you've got some degree of colorblindness. My grandma can see it just fine. Grandpa, not so much. He was red-green colorblind, or in electrical wiring terms, hot wire, ground wire colorblind. It's not the kind of news someone just starting out as an electrician would want to hear. It's definitely not the news you want to hear in your 50s well into your career at that point. Maybe if he found out about this sooner, he would have chosen a different path. But instead, he did all the things you can read about in your program. What's not in there, though, are the little things. How he did take your daughter to work day before it was a thing, so his girls could see what their dad did for a living on the rail yards. Or even with a house full of girls, he was still a big supporter of the Orville High School football team. I just want to say that the, the curse passed along there. My mom, four boys. <laughs> or how he worked to uh, make sure to get a train engine donated to a nearby high school for students to train on a train. Education was incredibly important to Grandpa. He served for many years on the Palermo Board of Trustees. Where the community worked to get a pool, there were spaghetti dinners to raise the money for the pool, then there was the digging and the building the structures all around it. You saw some of the pictures earlier. Uh, he was involved every step of the way. When a project took him to New Zealand during my mom's senior year of high school, they offered for her to come along and finish at a New Zealand school. I'm sure the New Zealand uh, school system is fine, but let's face it, it doesn't match what we have up here. They didn't want to uproot her during a cri uh, critical time in her life. Um, one of my girls uh, graduated uh, in 2020, and with COVID and all, you know, there were a lot of experiences uh, that she had missed out on, uh, dances, uh, just graduation experiences. But unlike COVID, my grandpa had someone he could negotiate with. So in the end, she ended up graduating with the Las Plumas High School class of 1968, and the company flew her out later on to join my grandma and grandpa. And I'm going to close this with a simple piece of advice from my grandpa. If someone's offering you training, take it. Never stop learning. You never know what doors it can open up for you in the future. Thank you, and congratulations again to all of tonight's honorees. Thank you, Kyle. And we're keeping this one in the family, and I think this is the first time we've done a father-daughter. I think it is. Next inductee is Winona, better known as Noni Bidwell Buis. Noni graduated from Las Plumas High School in 1968. Was very involved in the Associated Student Body activities. Active in photo, pep, and Spanish club. Also a member of the Letterettes, the FHA, and the American Field Service Group that supported foreign exchange students. Noni went to work for Butte County Office of Education in 1977, serving as an instructional assistant in special education for 31 years. During those years, she worked mainly with students who were hard of hearing. During her career of working with special needs students, Noni was honored in 1977 by the Butte County Special Education Local Plan Area for her outstanding work with these students. In 2000, she was honored by the Orville Secondary Teachers Association as a, <coughs> excuse me, as a friend of education for her dedication to high school students as a parent. 
Following her retirement, Noni actively served her community, continuing to focus on students. She lent strong support to Las Plumas and Oroville High School track and field and cross country teams, photographing athletes competing and then posting that photos on the Harrison Stadium page, Facebook page that she personally facilitates and keeps current. She's also an annual fixture at the, with her camera at the Special Olympics event held every year at Harrison Stadium. In 1999, Bruce Harmon and the First United Methodist Church had a vision for supporting Oroville area educators. Just after the first awards dinner, Bruce passed away, and Noni stepped in and became the primary player for the event. Now, thanks to Noni, the event is known as the Ross Harmon Awards in honor of Bruce Harmon and Charlotte Ross. 2008 saw Noni longtime high school teacher, coach Tom Aldridge, form a group called Oasis, Orville Area Sports Initiative supporters, and worked tirelessly to, mass, to pass Measure G that generated $12 million in funds for the much-needed upgrades to Harrison Stadium. For the past 11 years, Noni has spent countless days and evenings at the stadium working the scoreboard monitor for nearly every sporting event held there. In 2015, the Butte County Office of Education honored Noni by naming her a Hall of Fame honoree, and in 2017, she received the YMCA Community Service Individual of the Year Award in Oroville. Noni does not know the meaning of the word receive. She just gives. Please welcome Noni Buis into the Oroville Union High School District Hall of Fame, Class of 2020. I am not gifted like my youngest son. I do not, I'm not that great at speeches and things. I prefer to be behind the scenes. But I did want to thank, thank you kids. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee. You guys do an awesome job. It's nice to, rec I, to recognize people. That's what we do with the Ross Harmon. We do classified and certificated and if you know anybody, we have a website. Please nominate those deserving people, especially now. Uh, I want to thank my son Jeremy, that one, <laughs> because he did a lot of the work for his grandpa and my award. So thank you, son. And I'm fortunate to have, as you can see, four wonderful sons. The only problem is, is these are all Orville Tigers. <laughs> their, their father and I were proud Las Plumas Thunderbirds. <laughs> and if you notice, my father was an Orville Tiger. But luckily, my grandchildren are all Las Plumas Thunderbird alumni. <laughs> and the greatest thing was last night when I was sitting in the press box at Harrison. Hi, Mike. And we were, <laughs> and uh, a young man came in and he goes, What are you doing in here? And he looked around and I says, Well, I run the monitor, you know. Well, you don't have to do that, do you? And I said, No, but I like to do it. Wow, you do that for us? And he looked at me and he goes, Thank you. <laughs> and that's why I do it. I mean, for the kids. So, and thank you, everybody. And I beat five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh.